The story of Echo the Bat by Ginger Butcher. In the upper elevations of Arizona, there was a forest of tall ponderosa pine trees. The forest was covered with snow, and the evenings were quiet as animals slept through the cold winter nights. When spring arrived, the snow melted, and a colony of female bats made their home in a hollow pine tree to raise their young. Unlike birds who hatch from eggs, bats are mammals. The mother bats will give birth to their young and feed them mother's milk. Because their pups are too young to fly and catch their food, mother bats care for their pups during the first month. As the warm days of spring led to summer, a baby bat was born. He had a tiny furry body with awkward wings. His mother held him close to her and wrapped him in her wings. All day long, she could hear his chirping cry echo through the hollow tree. From that day on, his mother called him Echo. Echo spent his days in the hollow tree upside down holding on to his mother, who hung by her feet. A bat's legs are made up of lightweight bones. The bone structure is good for flying and hanging upside down, but it is not good for walking. Echo's wings are bigger than his whole body. They are made up of arms and long finger bones covered with a stretchy skin. His thumb is a claw that is used to cling to his mother or to the inside of the tree. Just when the sun set, Echo's mother called to him, Hold on tight! I'm taking you with me so I can catch some insects for breakfast, Mother Bat explained. Flying insects are food for us bats. Echo grabbed hold of his mother with his clawed thumbs, and away they went. They flew up and down and all around the forest. His mother made a high-pitched chirp through her mouth that hit the insects and bounced back to, di to direct her to the insects. Echo could hear his mother's chirping, but he was more interested in flying. Wow, Echo thought to himself, I wonder if I will ever learn to fly. One evening, Mother Bat had to go out and find insects without Echo. You have grown too big for me to carry, said Mother Bat. Stay here with the other bat pups. I will be home soon. Oh, Mother, cried Echo, I want to fly too. When can I learn? Soon enough, Mother Bat replied. Before she left, Mother Bat warned Echo and the other pups, Be careful not to fall because there are owls and snakes who would like to have you for their dinner. Echo and the other bats held on tight to the inside of the tree. They were very scared of the owls and snakes they heard about. They huddled close together to stay warm and began calling for their mothers. There she is, cried Echo. The mother bats returned and greeted their pups. Echo called back to his mother. Over here! But she flew over to another bat pup. Mother, over here! cried Echo again. But mother bat flew to another bat pup, sniffing and licking its fur. Oh, why doesn't she hear me? Echo thought to himself. Finally, mother bat flew to Echo and started licking his fur. Why didn't you hear me, Echo asked his mother. Well, Echo, replied Mother Bat, since it is so dark in our hollow tree and there are so many pups, I had to use another sense to find you. I could tell that you were my baby because of your scent. So you see, Echo, I had to get close enough to the bat pups to smell their scents. Bats, continued Mother Bat, have many different senses and one very special sense that you will learn about later. Echo was very happy that his mother had returned. He wondered what other sense his mother was talking about. Echo was a month old and had grown almost as big as his mother. It is now time for you to learn to fly, said Echo's mother. Echo was so excited, he let go of the tree and began to flap his wings. He fell. He flapped and flaps, but he was still falling. Then slowly he started to fly. Up and up he went. Look at me, shouted Echo. Look at me, mother. I'm flying. All young bats were happy to be flying. They flew around the lake and through the pine trees. Echo was getting tired and hungry. It takes a lot of energy for a bat to fly. Follow me, Echo's mother called out. Let's find some yummy beetles for breakfast. Echo could see with his eyes and could hear many sounds in the forest with his ears, but this was not enough to catch those tiny bugs after the sun went down. Mother called Echo. How do you catch those bugs? It is too dark and I can't see them. You must use your ears, Mother Bat replied. Ears? asked Echo. How can I see with my ears? We use our eyes to passively sense our surroundings, explained Mother Bat. But we have another sense which, sense which allows us to actively sense our surroundings. Echo, you can actively call out a high-pitched sound and listen for its echo. The sound will bounce off the objects in the forest like trees. 
and tiny insects. Using your big ears, she told Echo, listen for the sound to return. Depending on how long the sound takes to return and from which the direction the sound returns, you can locate the objects to avoid like trees and objects for food like tiny insects. This is called echolation. Echo tried calling out an er ultrasonic chirp. He was amazed at the new world that was not visi visible to him before. After locating an insect, Echo flew toward it and caught it in his mouth. He then pushed the bug into his mouth with his tail. Remember to chew quickly, alerted Mother Bat. You must begin making your chirps again quickly so you don't run into a tree. This is very hard to do, thought Echo. This echolation must take a lot of practice. We bats have remarkable senses. Mother Bat continued. As you get more practice, your chirps will contain different frequencies or pitches of sound. A very high-pitched sound has a short wavelength that will bounce off the tiniest of insects, like gnats. Chirps that are not as high-pitched have longer wavelengths and they bounce off insects like beetles. If you use one chirp that starts low and gets higher, you can not only locate different size insects, but you can see the different parts of the insects, like their large bod bodies and tiny heads. Echo listened to his mother talk and felt pride in being a bat. All of the baby bats and their mother spent about an hour eating almost their own weight in insects before going back home for their rest. Back at their home in the pine tree, Echo's mother told him a story. Soon it will be getting colder, said Mother Bat. We will fly south where it is warmer and stay there all winter. This is what it means to migrate. We will travel to a cave where we will meet other bats. This is a wonderful time for us. Sleep now, Echo, whispered Mother Bat. This time will come soon. Echo fell asleep next to his mother, dreaming of the bat cave. The next evening, while Echo and his mother were out hunting for insects, a dark cloud filled the sky. Crash! Lightning strikes. The sound of thunder hurt Echo's ears. Echo was very scared and couldn't see his mother anywhere. Then all of a sudden, a great fire started to burn. Echo flew as fast as he could from the fire, but just then the rain started to come down. The rain hit his wings hard and he fell into a pine tree. He scrambled to grab hold of a branch. Where am I? wondered Echo. I can't see any other bats. I don't know which way is home. What am I going to do? Echo called out using a series of high, of short, high-pitched chirps and waited for a response. Nothing. While resting on a branch, Echo wondered if he would ever locate the cave where all the bats will meet. Tomorrow night, he thought, I will start looking for that cave. 